It totally changed my ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. So I wanted to talk to you today about sleep. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had challenges with sleep, but I definitely have, um, since I was a kid really. Um, I remember as a little kid I would stay up really late and try and um, stay up later than I should just so that I would get really, really tired. Like I wasn't even trying to be bad. I just wanted to get myself as tired as possible so that I could fall asleep quickly when I did go to bed because I was so afraid of being in bed and tossing and turning for hours. Um, and I had this challenge all the way up until adulthood, until a few years ago when I decided that I needed to do something about this because I didn't want to deal with it for the rest of my life. So I went and met with a sleep doctor at a local hospital here in Charleston. And he actually had me do a sleep study. He put all these like crazy electrodes all over my head and had me sleep at the hospital. And it turned out I didn't have anything that they could really diagnose, no insomnia or sleep apnea or anything like that. But what he said was that I have disrupted sleep, which basically means that my brain learned to sleep wrong. So the way to fix that is to essentially train my brain to sleep correctly. And he gave me a handful of tips that he said should help my brain relearn to sleep correctly. So what he suggested are what I would like to talk to you t about today. He recommended that um, first turn the temperature down in your house right before you go to bed because your body relaxes and actually it drops a few degrees when your body is falling asleep just naturally and so turning the thermostat down in your house helps teach your body okay this is this is time to sleep the temperature is going down um, he also said that I should sleep in a completely dark room so I got blackout curtains for my bedroom and for a while I even slept with like one of those eye masks and he also said don't work out after about four o'clock in the afternoon so I know for people who are afternoon exercisers this one will not be your favorite but for me sleep was a big priority and so even though it was hard I made the switch to working out in the morning instead of after work and it it really helped um, he also recommended that you not try and go to sleep until you're actually feeling tired um, I know a lot of us like to have a bedtime and we think okay it's 10 o'clock I need to go to bed but if you hit 10 o'clock and you're just not feeling kind of drowsy, he said just stay up a little bit longer until you start to feel your body getting drowsy. Um, he also said that you want to turn off all electronics probably 30 minutes to an hour before you go to bed um, because the, the light from screens is, is telling your brain that, oh, it's sunlight, it's daytime, I need to be awake and alert. Um, the same with like big overhead lights. Turning all of those off helps your brain reset to know, okay, at this time of the day, this is bedtime, this is nighttime, I need to start shutting down. Um, so when I was able to try all of these tips together, it totally changed my ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. Um, so now I really don't feel like I have sleep issues anymore. And I know this may not work for everyone, but I think this is a great routine, a uh, great sleep hygiene, even for people who don't really have sleep issues, but just want to have better quality sleep. Um, this is good for anyone, but especially for people who have had challenges with sleep. So I hope that was helpful and um, please give these tips a try and let me know how it goes. Let me know if you have other sleep tips that you have found to be really, really helpful. And as always, please like and subscribe and comment. Um, I would love to connect with all of you. Thanks.